because what he put down was entirely personal. You might hear the influences, West Montgomery, a little bit of maybe Billy Bean, Jimmy Rainey, Johnny Smith, these guys, Les Paul. But he devised his own path and it was uh, systematically brilliant and his execution was unparalleled. And anybody who played guitar took heed of that and he really opened up a new approach. Even his, uh, you know, back in 63, he and, he and George Benson were friendly rivals on the same turf. Both were, you know, uh, coming out of Wes and were potentially heirs to that throne. Uh, but even Benson admits that what Pat was doing was something different. He knew the roots of it, but he was taking it somewhere else. Uh, Benson admired it, and anyone with ears could hear that Pat, you know, from the time of El Hombre on, was on to something entirely invigorating and different um, in terms of his lines, his approach rhythmically. Um, and uh, it was just compelling. Uh, and other guitar players really, to this day, reflect that influence. So he's an incredibly important player. He's, if not on the Mount Rushmore of jazz guitar, he's 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 right up there uh, alongside uh, you know his heroes, Wes and you know who else is there? Charlie Christian, Django, these guys, Pat and Benson, man, are right up there in terms of facility approach, uh, personal take on the instrument, uh, an expression that is just so uh, heightened, so potent and powerful that it's uh, undeniable to, to drop the name of that album he did toward the end. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, he's, he's unbelievable. You can hear it, it's on the records, anyone with ears knows what time it is so uh that's part of pat's legacy uh pat i wanted to ask you to address something that is often overlooked about pat martino we're all dazzled by his facility his single note facility is incredible his notions for uh the lines that he's playing are very personal and admirable uh but what about his rhythmic drive as someone who's comping behind you as a soloist? That's something that's not talked about. You can hear it from the earliest album. And uh, again, that record, the live record with uh, Gene Ludwig, uh, Young Guns, he's, he's just so driving in his comping. And that's an aspect of his playing that's often overlooked. How did it feel for you to feel that accompaniment while you're soloing? It's, it's like playing with a second. <clears throat> excuse me, like playing with a second drummer in a lot of ways because he's just, you know, he's defining where he wants to time, how he wants to feel. And I think, and you kind of, as you kind of said, the sense of forward motion in what he's playing. I mean, yeah. everything being on the upbeats, I think is, um, you know, it's, it's a propelling everything forward constantly, you know. And also... It's, you know, it's just giving you another strong pulse to lock onto as you're playing as well. So it's, you know, yeah, a lot of people don't talk about it because I think, you know, from there, you know, it's something he did more so with the organ groups, bass groups, and obviously than the piano groups. And the funny thing is, I remember him saying on numerous occasions, he never liked a comp. He'd just mm -hmm. rather be like a horn player in that sense. But I mean, yeah, I mean, it was a strong pulse, and it was something that really propelled um, the tension as well. It built a lot of tension within the song, you know, to get to these peak points of different solos, or even during the melodies when he would insert different chords here and there, it would be the same kind of effect. So it was very powerful, very powerful as well. 